It was all eyes on Alexa Bliss tonight on the first match of Monday Night Raw. Of course, a lot of people on social media making a huge thing out of Alexa's posing in the ring, especially the hands up to her ears. Now, I'll be honest, it's cool, but it's not exactly how Bray Wyatt does it. So bear that in mind. I don't think it's too much. I do think, though, it's a heelish thing to do when you don't want to hear the pop. For the baby face. I think that's what it was. There was this great spot as well when Bianca was holding back Alexa. She's wildly swinging. Now, if you don't know, on social media, fans made a huge joke that this would be just like scary movie. And that's exactly, I think, what Alexa and Bianca were trying to go for. Recreating this scene makes sense, right? Well, it was right at the end of the match, we saw this guy in an Uncle Howdy mask. And of course, we, yep, we did spot security trying to move him along. <laughs> I love it. But there was a second guy too, both wearing the Uncle Howdy mask. Alexa would get in the ring. The glitch would happen again. This time it would happen twice. But it was her reaction to it that was really interesting. Notice she's grabbing her head. This looks fiendish to me. This looks like there's an in, inner demon sort of telling her what to do and she doesn't want to listen to it. She's trying to fight it. But she would attack the referee of the match. And of course, then she would lay out Bianca Belair with multiple DDTs to the still steps. Now, I love the fact this sign was behind her as well saying, he's coming for you. I'm sure that's just a fan sign, but pretty cool. The DDT looked absolutely brutal and it allowed Alexa Bliss to stand tall. Clearly, we're going to get a rematch probably at the Royal Rumble. I think this is something to definitely keep your eyes open on. But it didn't end there. Later on, just before the main event, Alexa Bliss was backstage with Byron Saxton and she actually said that she took control of Bianca Belair's mindset. And I, this, this wasn't just normal Alexa at all. Alexa is 100% a hill here and 100% looks like she's accepting the darkness. Possibly a key phrase because, again, on Raw, we had Uncle Howdy telling us to embrace the dark as part of the advertisement for the Mountain Dew, the pitch black match at the Royal Rumble between Bray and LA Knight. What happens next? Only time will tell. This is Stings you might have missed from Monday Night Raw. Make sure you've hit the like button. And if you are new to the channel, hit the subscribe button too. The main event of Raw saw Theory retain the United States title against Seth, but we got to talk about this. Seth went to lift Theory up for a powerbomb. His knee seemingly buckled. I'm not sure if Seth was just really good at selling this or it was a legit injury. We know Seth's had injury problems with his knees before. So he did seem to get back into the match fairly quickly. All hope is Seth Rollins is A-OK. -okay. Very fun Easter egg tonight as Damage Control were walking the halls. We saw the Hurt Business, well, three quarters of them anyway, talking to Adam Pearce. Of course, Cedric Alexander, Sheldon Benjamin and MVP discussing something with the guy in control of WWE. Very interesting. Is the Hurt Business coming back? The official theme song for the Royal Rumble was announced tonight. Hardy sold out. And this would play a big part of tonight's Raw because Hardy was there on Raw. And of course, this would be a major part of the Solo Sokoa Elias Music City Street Fight as he would get into the ring, pick up the guitar, and he would crack Solo on the back with it. And Solo took it like it was a literal butterfly hitting him. He did not flinch. Oh, I loved it. And the end of this match was brutal as well, that... Huge Uranogi right onto the piano. Oh, absolutely brutal. Solo Sokoa is literally a guy to look out for in WWE without doubt. I love that the commentary table, the announcers were actually selling him, being scared of him and stuff. That was cool. Of course, he was looking for Hardy as if to say he wanted to hit him again after the guitar spot. Now, interestingly, Hardy was announced tonight to be performing at the Royal Rumble. Could you imagine if Solo attacked like a music performer during a music performance? That would be interesting. The second Bloodline match was a six-man tag, but we got to ask, what was going on with Montez Ford tonight? I know the announcers instantly said he's worried about Bianca Belair, but 
he just didn't want in this match. He didn't seem interested. It was uh, Kevin Owens slapping his chest to get him in. When he was in, he did fight the bloodline. But dude was absolutely not willing to get into this match. He had no interest in fighting. No interest in that tag. Very, very interesting. I mean, if you're that concerned, would you not be with Bianca, like, in the hospital? And of course, it's getting people talking and people are asking, is this a start of a Montez Ford Hill turn? I mean, maybe? At the end of the match, though, it was Sammy who was going to destroy Kevin Owens until Drew McIntyre and Sheamus would make the save. This makes sense because they're facing the Usos for the tag belts on SmackDown. They got a giant pop too, which was nice. WWE shared the news today on Raw about AJ Styles suffering the injury at the Holiday Live event they did recently. Uh, they used, obviously, his tweet. You can see it on screen. Just best wishes and get well soon to AJ Styles. Massive news, though, for WrestleMania. Both Night 1 and Night 2, courtesy of WrestleTix, has nearly sold out. That is incredible. We are months away from Mania and it's nearly sold out. Now, I have a real problem with this, okay? Becky Lynch came out, basically challenged damage control, and we got a handicap match with Becky versus Dakota and Io. Then, during the match, Mia Shin came out, and Mia Yim would jump on the apron and get the tag. This was not a tag team match. Why was Mia Shin allowed just to randomly enter herself as a tag team partner? The bell rung... For a two-on-one handicap match. He didn't restart the match. So in that turn, because Mishim was the one that was pinned, did Becky Lynch technically lose? I don't believe so. Surely the match is void. Right? I don't know. This is weird. Talking of weird, Dominic Mysterio is out of prison. And apparently prison has completely changed him. He's not going to be the same. WWE have given him a toothpick. And... A teardrop tattoo under his left eye. Oh, my God. <laughs> uh, do you know what? This is brilliant. I hope WWE announced somewhere that he was, like, I don't know, in custody for, like, an hour. <laughs> that would just be perfect. And I really want to say thank you, because if you watch this video from Friday after SmackDown, this video on the channel achieved over 170,000 views, which is nuts. So, thank you. Raw was an okay show tonight. Not the best. Not as good as I expected, I'll be honest. Maybe that's a bit of a reason why I'm only going to give it a 7. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. Subscribe to the channel if you're new. Turn on those notifications. Never miss another upload. Like, share, and I'll see you next time. Peace!